In this video, I want to introduce to you the concept of a linear transformation. So what is a linear transformation? So I'm going to use this symbol to represent a linear transformation. And what it is, it is basically a process. It is a process by which you change a vector from one vector to another vector. And you can define your linear transformation uh, uh, however you want, as long as this one rule is satisfied. So your linear transformation must be defined in such a way where if your linear transformation is applied to this expression, then it is equal to the scalar a times the linear transformation applied to alpha plus the scalar b times the linear transformation applied to beta. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to try to link the concept of a linear transformation to the concept of a matrix. So that is our goal of this video. So in order to do that, let's uh, consider a scenario. So let's say I have a vector space, and let's call this vector space v. And then let's say I have two vectors from this vector space, a vector called alpha and a vector called beta. And the two are related like this. Uh, I'm going to apply a certain linear transformation to alpha, and it is going to give me beta. So you can see that this linear transformation transforms one vector, alpha, which is from this vector space, into another vector, beta, which is also from this vector space. So in linear algebra, it's actually possible uh, to have linear transformations that bring one vector into another vector from another vector space. But for our purposes, we're just going to focus on the case where the transformation happens within the same vector space. So both alpha and beta are within the same vector space. And also, uh, let us assume that for this vector space, we have a set of vectors called E. And these vectors are going to be E1, E2, all the way to En. And then this set of vectors is going to be a basis for V. So that means all these vectors are linearly independent and they span the space V. So all other vector, uh, vectors within the vector space V can be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors. And so that means for alpha, I can actually express it as a linear combination of all these vectors. So I can express alpha, alpha as a linear combination like this. And then you can see that we can also, uh, another way to express alpha, uh, apart from writing out this whole cumbersome expression, we can also use something called the the uh, coordinate vector. So I'm going to use this notation to represent a coordinate vector and this basically is a column matrix that contains all the scalars uh, required to form the linear transformation for alpha. So I put this E subscript over here because the scalars depend on which basis you're using. So for the basis E I get all these scalars which I can use to multiply to the vectors which the linear, uh, the linear combination of which would give me back the vector alpha. So I'm just going to introduce this notation to represent all the scalars that is required to, to give you back alpha. And then of course I can do the same thing for beta. So beta is also a vector within this vector space. And then let's say beta can be expressed in such a form. So bn, en. And so once again, using the concept of a coordinate vector, I can also express beta. So apart from using this cumbersome expression, I can also use a column matrix to represent beta. And so for convenience sake, let, let me define this, let me call this column matrix A, and then let me call this column matrix B. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to eventually find out that B is actually related to A by a matrix. So if we start off with A, we apply a linear transformation and we arrive at beta, which has a different set of scalars uh, using which we could form the linear combination, we can actually find V by multiplying a matrix to A. And then you can find that, eventually you will find that this matrix T is actually the matrix that is associated with your linear transformation. So that is what I'm going to try to show in this video. So the next step in our, in our uh, demonstration is that we need to define how the basis will change under the linear transformation. So the linear transformation takes one vector and then it changes it to another vector that is also within this vector space. So this expression is going to be some other vector and that vector is also going to be in this vector space. So that means the resulting product it can be expressed as a linear combination of the basis. So that's what I'm going to do. After you transform this vector, I'm going to express the result as a linear combination of the vectors within the basis. So I'm just going to express it like this. So all these t's that you see here, these are all scalars, scales you would expect to find in a linear transformation. 
So the values of these scalars would depend on how you define your linear transformation. So for different linear transformations, you will get different values. So it all depends on how you define it. And then for any given definition, you, the resulting product will be equal to something like this. And then of course we can do this, uh, do the same thing for all other vectors within the within the vector uh, within the basis. And so we get a general formula that looks something like this. So for the jth vector within the basis, this is going to be equal to this expression, t i j times e i. So this is uh, how we're going to define our uh, linear transformation. So we need to specify how it changes the uh, the basis, uh, the vectors within the basis. So this is how we spe uh, how we define our our linear transformation. So with this defined, now we can try to apply the transformation to our vector alpha. And you can see that alpha, I'm going to use the summation sign to express it. So this is just uh, using the summation sign to express this expression. So alpha is a co linear combination of all the vectors within the basis. And then now I'm going to invoke the sec uh, this rule over here. So recall that for any linear transformation, it has to satisfy this rule. And then with this rule, I can show that we can actually move the linear transformation inside the bracket like this. So you can easily show this, just don't write this out as a summation sign, just write, the, write it all out explicitly, and then you can see that you can obviously just move the t to the inside. And then recall that we are, we've already defined how this vector is going to change. We've already defined how the linear transformation is going to affect the vectors within the basis. So for this expression, all I'm going to do is that I'm going to substitute in this expression. So if a, j, and then so we multiply it by this term. So all I'm doing is just substituting this expression in. And then now I'm going to switch the order of the summation signs. So I'm just going to combine everything together. And then I'm going to move this summation sign, sign over to the outside. We have the second summation sign, and this will be applied to t i j a j and then e i. So you can see all I'm doing is I'm just moving the order around. And then you can see that, so remember the left-hand side is the linear transformation of the vector alpha. So you, see that, you can see that after you apply the linear transformation, you get a final product, which is a linear combination of the, uh, of the vectors within the basis. So you can see that uh, if you would recall what we've done over here, we've defined beta to be the result after you apply the linear transformation to alpha. So recall that this we've defined this to be equal to beta, and then beta is equal to linear combination of of the vectors within the basis. So now you can see that we can actually match up uh, all the scalars with expression uh, with this expression. So for b1, I can match it with the corresponding uh, expression, which is going to be equal to so b1 is equal to j is equal to one to n t one j. J. So you can see that all I'm doing is just I'm substituting i is equal to one over here, and then of course you can do the same thing for b two and all the other, all the other scalars. So t, two j, a j, and so you can see that essentially we have solved our problem. Remember, we started off with alpha. We have a linear combination, and then we found that uh, we have a uh, we have the initial coordinate vector which is composed of all these scalars a one to a n. And then after applying the linear transformation, we have a different set of scalars, b1 all the way to bn. And then we wanted to try to connect the, the scalars b with the scalars in a. And then we've essentially done that already. You can see that each one of these b's can be expressed as this expression here, which is in terms of a. And then a more concise way of expressing this would be to say that the column matrix b is equal to some matrix t multiplied by a, where t is equal to this. So t11, t12, all the way to t1n. So the first number in the subscript uh, represents which row you're in. So this is uh, in row 1, column 1. This is row 1, column 2. This is row 1, column n. And so you start off here. Uh, this is row 2, column 1, row 2, column 2, all the way to row 2, column n, and so on and so forth. 
So this is how your t is going to be defined. And this is row n, column 1, row n, column 2, all the way to row n, column n. And so you can see that we have arrived at what we wanted. We wanted to connect the, the uh, column matrix B with A, and then we found that we can actually do it with this matrix T, which is defined in such a way. And then we call that all these T's are defined over here. So it is it, the values of the individual T's depend on how you define your linear transformation. And then we'd say that this matrix T is going to be the matrix that is associated with this linear, uh, linear transformation. So we have achieved what we started out to achieve for this video.